Welcome to the deep dive. You know, in this world that asks so much from our brains, who wouldn't want to be a bit sharper or have like better focused or just remember things more easily, it's super appealing. And that's really why nootropics, these compounds, uh, basically designed to help boost cognitive functions like memory, focus, creativity, that sort of thing. Well, they've just exploded in popularity. The promise they hold, it's genuinely exciting stuff. But okay, with all this interest, there's just a ton of information flying around. And well, unfortunately, a fair bit of misinformation and myth too. Okay, let's try and unpack this a bit. Exactly. That's really our goal today is to just clear the air. We want to help you, the listener, make you know informed choices and maybe set some realistic expectations. And we'll do that by carefully separating the facts from the fiction when it comes to brain enhancement. For this deep dive, um, we're relying quite heavily on excerpts from nootropic myths, debunking common misconceptions which comes from Nootropics, LLC. Right. And when people first hear about Nootropics, I think, you know, that movie image often jumps straight to mind. You know, the one, the limitless pill, instant genius, all that. It's a really powerful fantasy. And it leads us perfectly into our first big myth, doesn't it? This idea that Nootropics are basically instant super intelligence pills. Is that common idea, that misconception about instant, like superhuman intelligence, is that maybe the biggest hurdle for people understanding what Nootropics actually do? Well, it absolutely is. Yeah. And it's a, it, it's fascinating how far that Hollywood idea strays from the actual science. The real insight, you know, is that nootropics aren't about transforming your brain into something completely different. It's much more about optimizing its potential, but within your sort of natural limits. They really are not magic pills giving you superhuman cognitive powers instantly. Instead, maybe think of them as, as supporters for your existing brain function. They help enhance things we all want, like focus, maybe recalling memories better, mental clarity, even energy levels. And, you know, many of the really significant benefits, especially thinking about long term brain health or actual memory improvement, they tend to develop gradually with consistent use. It's not instantaneous. It's really less about getting a new superpower and more about unlocking some latent deficiency especially, and this is key, when you combine them with good habits. Right, right. So shifting expectations from, boom, overnight transformation mm -hmm. to more like sustained support, that really reframes how we should even think about approaching them, doesn't it? And okay, if they're not a shortcut to becoming Einstein, but more like a helpful hand for the brain you've got, well, it mm -hmm. kind of follows that not every helpful hand is going to be right for everyone. Which brings us nicely to myth number two, this idea that all nootropics are basically created equal, like a one-size-fits-all approach. The assumption being, maybe if one product doesn't seem to do anything for you, then none of them will. Yeah, and this is such a crucial distinction to make. Nootropic is actually an incredibly broad term. It covers, I mean, hundreds of different substances, everything from natural herbal extracts, amino acids, vitamins, all the way to, you know, synthetic compounds developed in labs. What's really important to grasp here is that these ingredients vary wildly in how they work their mechanisms of action. So some might boost neurotransmitter production, like, say, acetylcholine, which is linked to memory. Others might work by improving blood flow to the brain, getting more oxygen and nutrients up there. And beyond just how they work, their quality, where they come from, the best dosage that can differ dramatically, too. Plus, the formulations themselves vary a lot. Some products are just single ingredients. Others are these complex stacks that just means combinations of multiple ingredients designed hopefully for synergistic effects where you know the combined effect is potentially greater than the sum of the individual parts so bottom line what works amazingly well for one person might have a totally different effect or maybe no effect on someone else and that's largely down to our unique individual biochemistry that individuality factor mm. it really highlights how important a personalized approach is doesn't it if what works is so unique to the person it seems logical that well other basic health things must play an even bigger role which leads us straight into myth number three the belief that somehow nootropics can replace a healthy lifestyle this is where someone might think oh i can pull all-nighters eat junk food skip the gym just pop this pill and i'll be fine uh-huh and this is perhaps one of the most dangerous misconceptions out there. It's really not how it works. Mm -hmm. In reality, nootropics are supplements. The clue's in the name, right? Mm -hmm. They're meant to supplement a healthy foundation. They absolutely cannot replace it. Yeah. And it's not just about supplements not replacing the foundation. It's deeper than that. It's understanding that nootropics often work by supporting the very same pathways that things like good sleep and nutrition rely on. Mm -hmm. Optimal brain function, I mean, it leans heavily on getting enough sleep eating a balanced, nutritious diet, getting regular physical exercise, managing stress effectively. Think of like this. Nootropics might be like the turbocharger for your car, but your sleep, your diet, your exercise, that's the engine itself. 
You just can't slap a turbo onto a broken engine and expect it to suddenly win a race. It won't happen. That's a fantastic analogy. It really puts it in perspective. Right. Nootropics can certainly give a boost to an already healthy system, but they simply cannot perform miracles against a background of, well, neglect. Makes total sense. But then you hear about natural nootropics, which sounds great, but that leads into myth number four. This belief that natural automatically means 100% safe, like zero side effects possible. People often assume, hey, if it comes from a plant, it must be inherently risk-free. Right. And while it's true that many natural nootropics do have excellent safety profiles, especially, you know, high quality, often trademarked ingredients you find in reputable formulas, when they're used as directed, yes, they're generally safe, but natural does not automatically mean zero risk for absolutely everyone. Hmm. I mean, poison ivy is natural, right? Mm. But you wouldn't want to rub it all over yourself. Good. Individual allergies, sensitivities, potential interactions with medications you might be taking, or even pre-existing health conditions. These can still be factors. What's really paramount here is the quality of the sourcing, the purity of the ingredient, and using appropriate dosages. Just because something is labeled natural doesn't mean you can just ignore the label instructions or disregard how your own body responds. Absolutely. Always read the label, know your own body. Good advice for anything, really. Okay, that leads us to myth number five. The more is always better idea. This is the myth suggesting, well, if the recommended dose gives pretty good results, then taking double or maybe even triple will make it work even better or faster. Hmm, this is rarely true. And actually, it can often be counterproductive or in some cases, even risky. You see, the effective dosages for nootropic ingredients, they're typically figured out through scientific research. Exceeding those recommendations doesn't necessarily give you more benefits. It just doesn't usually work like that. In fact, doing that can significantly increase the chance of experiencing side effects, or sometimes it's simply wasteful. You're just paying for expensive urine. Always, and I really mean always, stick to the suggested serving size on the product label. Unless, of course, you've been specifically advised otherwise by your doctor or healthcare professional. Right. So it's about smart, targeted use, not just, just yeah, flooding your system and hoping for the best. Okay. Let's tackle one that I think causes a lot of anxiety for mm -hmm. people. Myth number six. This is the fear that all nootropics are addictive, maybe like some prescription smart drugs. Mm. So if most of these dietary nootropics aren't addictive, what's the key difference? like in how they work compared to prescription stimulants. That makes them less risky for habit formation. Yeah, that's a really important clarification. This myth often crops up because people confuse dietary supplement nootropics with pharmaceutical stimulants, mm -hmm. things like Adderall or Ritalin, which are prescription meds. And yes, they can indeed be habit forming. The truth is most dietary nootropics, especially those based on natural ingredients like herbs, amino acids, vitamins, food derived compounds, the kind you typically find in reputable, high-quality supplements, they just aren't considered to have the same mechanisms of action or the same addictive potential as those controlled prescription drugs. The difference really lies in how they interact with your brain's neurotransmitter systems. Many supplements work more gently, kind of optimizing things, rather than forcefully overriding your natural brain chemistry in a way that could lead to dependence. Okay, that makes sense. A gentler nudge versus a hard push. Exactly. But that said... Responsible use and always listening to your body, that's paramount, regardless of what supplement you're considering. That's a huge clarification then, differentiating between supplements generally available in controlled pharmaceuticals. Very important. Okay, finally, our last myth for today, myth number seven. This is the idea that you only really need nootropics if you have some kind of cognitive problem, like maybe significant memory loss already, or perhaps a diagnosed attention deficit disorder. Right. And while nootropics certainly can offer support for people facing specific cognitive challenges, and they do that, that's not the whole picture. Many perfectly healthy individuals use them proactively for optimization and for long term brain health. Think about students trying to study more effectively, professionals in high pressure jobs, entrepreneurs, athletes looking for a mental edge, even aging adults who just want to maintain their cognitive vitality. They often turn to nootropics. Why? To enhance their existing cognitive performance, maybe boost productivity, support creativity, manage stress better, or just generally maintain that cognitive sharpness for the long haul. 
For instance, you'll see advanced formulas sometimes recommended specifically for high achievers or those in really demanding roles. So, no, it's definitely not just about fixing a problem. It's often about enhancing potential that's already there. Okay, so we've busted quite a few myths today. That's really helpful. So to navigate this whole landscape wisely then and really make the most of this potential, what are some key takeaways? What should someone considering nootropics keep in mind? Yeah, the source material we looked at offers some really excellent practical tips. First, as we've kind of touched on, always do your own research. Try to understand the ingredients in a product. Second, prioritize quality and transparency. Look for brands that are open about what's in their products. Brands that use clinically studied, high-quality ingredients, often you'll see trademarked forms mentioned. Like, for example, Cognizant, which is known for supporting brain energy, or Mirave, a highly absorbable form of curcumin for inflammation or Sharp PS, that's phosphatidylserine for memory support, and Chocamine, a cocoa extract that can help with focus. Seeing those names often indicates a commitment to quality. Right, the specific trademarked ingredients signal they've invested in research. Exactly. Third, manage your expectations. Remember, aim for support and optimization, not some overnight miracle cure. And maybe most importantly, always, always consult your healthcare provider before starting any new supplement regimen. That's just smart practice. Look, the world of nootropics, it is genuinely exciting. It's full of potential, but it's just essential to approach it with a clear head and informed perspective. By understanding the actual science, and like we did today, debunking some of these common myths, you can hopefully move beyond the hype and make choices that genuinely support your specific cognitive health and performance goals. Because true brain enhancement, as we've discussed quite a bit, really comes from a holistic approach. It's about combining smart lifestyle choices, sleep, diet, exercise, stress management, with high-quality, evidence-backed nutritional support where appropriate. And that feels incredibly empowering, doesn't it? Just knowing how to sift through the noise, distinguish fact from fiction on your own cognitive journey, it means you're actually in the driver's seat, making truly informed choices for yourself, charting your own course. Absolutely. Which, you know, brings up a really important closing thought or maybe a question for you, the listener. Given that nootropics are supplements right, they're intended to supplement that healthy foundation, not replace it. This raises the question, what foundational elements in your life, maybe it's sleep, maybe it's diet, exercise, or how you manage stress, what could you prioritize right now to truly amplify your cognitive potential working with your brain's natural pathways? 